Hello, so I'm Mark Ensley, and you may know me from my other YouTube videos. I want to do a little bit of stuff about ServiceNow. Now, I do not work for ServiceNow. I have worked for ServiceNow, but I now work as a ServiceNow developer, so I tend to come at it from a pretty unbiased perspective, that when ServiceNow makes my job harder, I get upset, and when they make my job easier or better, I get happy. So we're going to go ahead and review App Engine Studio. Now, this is something that's really cool to me because I, uh, you know, work for a company where we have an instance that has been around for a while. I'll just say that. And some of this stuff, we have to do a little bit of work to actually get access to it. So I like to look at things like this and decide whether or not this is worth the time to, you know, make it work. Now, if we are lucky, I might, just might, get this uh, Visual Studio code to work too. Right here, I'm trying for it, but we'll find out if that's actually possible. So this is App Engine Studio, and this is actually pretty cool. So, you know, it says add a table. All right, I'll add a table. This is, you know, dumb company is my app, and uh, sorry if you're looking for the uh, PC service now stuff, that is not me. Actually, what I like to do is design a ServiceNow instance for the most dysfunctional company that could possibly exist. And uh, yeah, that makes it a lot more fun when you learn how to do things, especially complicated things. So, you know, I'm. what do I want to add to this? Uh, want to add this table? Where do I want to add it? Well, yeah, this app that I just made. Okay, so let's just create it from an existing table. That's what I would normally do, right? And we all know the table that we generally go for. That would be task, right? So if I choose the task table and I continue, all right, so let's give it a label. I'm just gonna do dumb right here. Okay, <laughs> that is an excellent uh, table name. Let's continue with that. Uh, yeah, you know what? Let's make it extensible, sure. And uh, auto number for sure. Uh, that all looks good. Let's continue. All right. I will say this is definitely cooler than a lot of the stuff I've seen in the previous, uh, you know, previous service now app engine stuff. So uh, we have extended the table and I am done personally. That is pretty good. So experience. Now it wants me to add an experience. Well, I'm not exactly sure what I was going to do. Uh, with this, but what the heck? Uh, you know, I like record producers. Let's do that. Uh, sure. People can add and create records. Let's get started. Okay. Let's set up your record producer. Sure thing. What's the name of it? Um, welcome to Dumb Company. And uh, the short description. Good luck. This is actually, I'll say it's pretty decent. This is uh, a little bit better than I was expecting it to be. So now I can edit the record producer. I wonder, okay, this is gonna take me, I'm still in a different UI than the normal old Jelly backend UI. Okay, this is cool. So uh, yeah, we got that. Item details, we have a description. I'm just gonna put uh, hi in there. I don't. I'm not going to do an image right now. I'll get back to that. I'm afraid of what might happen if I pull up my image uh, folder on this machine. So continue to destination. The table is my new table and it knows that. Okay, that's pretty good. And then uh, catalogs. Yeah, sure. Oh no, uh, don't make it too hard. It's loading. It's definitely using the new Polaris I can see. Let's just put the uh, service catalog in there. I think I'll probably do something on Polaris where I really like a lot of it, but there's one little complaint that I have. I'm pretty sure they're going to fix, but you know, I, I, we'll see. So here it goes. Let's put it in. Can we help you? Just make it easy on ourselves. Okay. Very nice. Continue to questions. Okay. So this is almost like a catalog item, which is curious to me because we're doing a record producer here. Uh, so we have this little thing up at the top, insert new questions. By the way, I did no research at all going into this, so we're just going to see how easy it is for an idiot to use. So uh, let's do a question set. I'm thinking that's a multi-row variable site. Set maybe. Uh, deactivate questions. What? 
Uh, okay, maybe I'm misunderstanding this. Uh, no questions added. Well, I, I do want to add some. How would I do that? Yeah, two column container. The title will be hi. And let's keep going. Okay, so this is actually pretty impressive. I think I would like to actually use this. This is uh okay. Let's see if I can kind of translate this to what I'm used to though. Uh I don't really want a structure. Oh, yeah, I want a new question. Yes. All right. Yeah, let's do let's start with something simple. Let's do text. Single line, multi line. Okay, I'm liking this already. Question label is what is your name? And uh name is going to be yeah, of course. Okay, now I'm starting to get a little bit of translation here to what I'm used to that this is just kind of filling things in for me quickly. And do I want to make yeah, this is mandatory for sure. Uh, and it's giving you a little preview on the right side. I like this. Let's insert this question. Okay. And I am going to do another question. Let's do something a little bit more. Uh, let's do like a choice list. Can we do that? Yeah, we can. And now I notice that I, I feel like there's a lot less options here for the question type that I'm used to in the variable editor, but let's just, let's go along with this choice. Uh, and let's do. Yeah, uh, drop down, sure, fixed values. Uh, that makes sense to me. That's going to make it harder on it. So, all right, question label will be, well, wait, did I give the question a, like, is a choice, is a drop down? Okay, yeah, I'm giving a label here. This is the question itself. Why in the world did you decide to work here? And then, uh, okay, that's a really long variable name. This is also mandatory. All right, so let's uh, continue to choices. I'm liking how this is looking. And let's say, oh, I'm starting to like this. I'm liking this a lot. I'm wondering, is this something that I can pull into when I create a record producer normally? Because I'm having a lot more fun with this right now than I do on the normal platform. It's just kind of moving me along and I like the preview thing. So let's do uh, first choice. I'm an idiot. And value can just be that. And then, uh, you know, I'm broke. And it's translating it well over to, uh, you know, other things. I'm, I'm liking this. And uh, I don't know, what would be another good choice for uh, this terrible company uh, I'm making? Let's see if I can spell this all right. I'm a glutton for, oh, I already messed up. Help me. I think that's gluten, whatever. There we go. All right, I think that's good enough. And uh, let's insert this. I'm liking this. It gave me a little preview I could have I done there too. Uh, and uh, let's do one more. New question, uh, question type. Let's do this as a uh, I don't want to do anything boring. Option? I don't really know what option's going to be. Checkbox? Okay, fine. Uh, I'm. Are you really sure? Did good job with that. That's definitely well mandatory because you you know that'll make it since it's true false. You can't submit it. All right. Pretty fun. Let's continue the settings. Uh, hide, add to wish list button. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, hide attachment button. Uh, no, not this time. Make attachment mandatory. I Okay, I have run into a lot of use cases where it would be really nice to just be able to check this box. Like that is awesome. I've actually written some code to make attachments mandatory and to hide that button. So to just have the ability to do that is really nice. Do you need to access available for, can I just do everybody like real quick? Just, oh my God, there's so much stuff. But I do see it's the Polaris interface again. Uh, let's just do ESS maybe, can I figure that out? Everyone, fine, I'll do ITIL for now. Cause I don't really know like what I'm supposed to do. 
you know what? I'll just cancel it. I'm, I'm assuming if I leave it blank, it's going to allow me to just have everyone see it. Because I really don't want to like deal with access stuff in a YouTube video. Uh, okay. So, let's go ahead and submit this. I am pretty impressed with this so far. And I'm really just wondering, can I use this when I am working on my application that already exists? Because I'm really liking a lot of things about this right now. So we have the experience, at least the record producer. I would think I can add more things here. So what are these things? Oh, I don't want to delete it. No, I just spent a ton of time on that. Okay, logic and automation. I'm assuming, yes. Okay, so I can create flows on this. So yeah, let's do a flow. And let's just, yeah, I'm going to build it from scratch, honestly. That's me, my flow. I'm going to call it, uh-oh, describe your flow. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to keep moving forward. Okay, flow named, uh-oh, I like this. Let's edit this flow. All right, I have already, you know, gotten good experience with the new flow designer. I am a bit worried at this moment. Well, I think it's going to make it. It's still doing a little loading thing. It's a developer instance, so I expect it to be a little on the slow side. Uh, let's add the trigger. Or maybe it just won't let me do anything. Because I'm not really too attached to having to do a flow at this moment. Yeah. I'm gonna let it, it should let me add a trigger. Oh, it's still processing. I see it over here. Well, I'm gonna get bored just watching this and eventually you're gonna get bored just watching this. So I don't know if this is really worth our time. Uh, I'll do another video on flows. The flow exists, it does nothing. It's not triggered by anything. Security, this company obviously does not care about security. So let's go ahead and submit this. Let's see what happens. And this might bore us to death too. Again, you know, I'm going to give ServiceNow some credit. They are giving me this instance free of charge, so I can't really complain too much about the long wait times. Okay, so I got a ton of errors, but eventually this flow loaded through. And I'm thinking maybe that's why, so let's give it another chance. No, it's just, it's giving me this error again. Show more, show less, but I can't really scroll. I mean, this is an out-of-the-box developer instance, so I'm a little confused as to why this is happening. Maybe I should just go ahead and kill this little guy here, this flow. Yeah, fine. Okay, it still makes me, you know, say I mean it. Let's delete that. All right, and then can I submit my... No, I can't. Ask your admin to check the pipeline configurations for this instance. You can try to submit again, dot, 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 show more later. Okay. Well, guys, I guess uh, this was doing really good at the beginning, but unfortunately, uh, right now, the App Engine Studio gets a one out of five, and uh, that's because you can't actually create an application in it, at least not in the out-of-the-box instance I was provided without going to uh, support no worries, guys. Service now. I love you guys. I know there's probably a solution to this, but uh, this should probably be handled in the error message itself, and I probably shouldn't be left to just uh, contact support. Alrighty. Well, guys, thanks for watching.